Nick Osborne at the transition conference, and Nick is a transition trainer, and we had a terrific couple of hours this morning exploring the issues of forming and developing groups. And I guess it's fair enough to say, and I've certainly experienced this, that anybody that's formed a community group um, from a diverse range of people um, to try and get some things done within uh, a, a few weeks, you're struggling potentially with all sorts of personality conflicts and where are we going and should we think about it or should we just get out there and do things. Um, is this any different in transition or is it the similar sort of issues that crop up for anyone? Well, I think that the key issues are the same with people. I'm assuming I talk into the camera. As you like. As you like. Okay, as I like. Well, I'd rather talk to you than the camera. You talk to me. Okay. The key issues are the same in that, you know, transition groups are community groups and they will address, uh, face those same kinds of issues. I think there's some added issues as well that, that are more specific to transition groups, which is partly to do with the the speed at which things are now changing in relation to peak oil and climate change and economic instability, the combination of those three together. And this, so it's something about the pace of the change. And it's also about the breadth of issues that the transition movement is addressing. Whereas a lot of other community groups tend to be more single issue, uh, focused on you know the environment or one particular issue. Um, or just one particular small part of their community, whereas transition initiatives are looking at the whole of their community and how to tra transform not only the community, some structures and systems in the community to do with energy and water and transport and health and all those things, but also um, individual behaviour change, also culture, shared beliefs and understandings, and also our shared um, kind of individual beliefs and feelings and assumptions about what's happening in, in the world. And it's, so there's that. And in addition to that, there's also what Transition is talking about is about a whole systems change mm -hmm. you know, in, in all areas of our life. It's talking about you know, a potential end of the industrial growth system, a transition period while that's ending, and building an alternative to that with what's going to replace that for human beings to have a sustainable presence on the planet. So from that comes, there aren't any quick fixes on the systemic problems that we're facing. No. And there aren't, in the same way, quick fixes on the group challenges that we face. Because as no. you say, you're emphasizing the importance of a shared set of values, development of the culture, and the, the personal change and personal transition, inner transition, as we were hearing about mm -hmm. um, earlier. Is, is that approach unusual to transition, or are you, what other, uh, where else are you drawing that inspiration from? What other trainers and facilitators are taking that approach? What, of, of addressing all those different parts yes, of? Yes, yeah. Um, well, that's, that tends to be an approach that I found myself talking about um, more, so, more so. Well, there's two things to say about that. One is transition is seen as being somewhat unique in that it does address inner transition as well as outer transition. And that's seen as being distinctive from more conventional environmental mm. and social change movements, which just focus on the external and transition is bringing in the internal. And then I've, I've sort of added a bit more, which is about saying, well, within the internal, there are two parts. There's the individual and the collective. So there's our own individual subjective beliefs and then there's the shared culture. And then in the external, there's the individual behavior change and then there's the collective systems and structures. And I'm drawing that from a, a model called the integral model which is from an American philosopher called Ken Wilber. And it's, a, it's like it's a philosophical model that, that can be applied to any, anything in the world. And I've been studying that, and then I'm applying that to, to my work in transition. So that's why I'm talking about those, those kind of added dimensions, whereas conventional movements just tend to focus on one of those. You know, it's either, people either say, well, we need to change everybody's behavior, or they say, well, we need to change all the community structures, or we need to change the culture, or we need to change the hearts mm. and minds. But very rarely do they take an approach that includes changing all four of those at the same time. And that's what I'm quite strongly advocating as part of this. I mean, I certainly found it gave us a, a really good basis on which to tackle the next workshop, which you gave, uh, uh, challenge which you gave us, which was uh, to develop uh, a story over the next 10 years. How did you remind me how you kicked that off? 
Well, we started off by asking people to reflect on their current experiences in groups. So thinking about um, what, what's really working in their transition groups at the moment. What are things that are really making the groups work successfully and be really effective? And what's the collective wisdom that we have about what helps groups work effectively and well together? Um, people talked about that and explored that. And then we asked about the challenges. What are some of the um, difficult things we're facing, some of the challenges, some of the frustrations, some of the obstacles? Uh, so people shared experience about that. And then we moved from thinking about what we're currently doing and how it's currently working into the future and asked people to imagine 10 years in the future. And imagine what kind of culture, because out of those four dimensions I was talking about earlier, this morning's session was focusing on the cultural dimension. What kind of culture would we like to create, would we like to love to be working in and love to be living in, in our transition groups, but also more widely in our communities? Um, so we got people to go on a, a little journey into the future, to do some guided visualisation about what that culture might be like and feel like and what people might be doing in there. And then we got people to share those visions of that future in 10 years. And then, as a small group of four or five, m make some kind of way of representing that. And so most people did it on flip charts. They drew pictures or maps or cartoons or they made things that represented what their visions of, of a, a culture, a kind of you know, truly sustainable culture in, in 10 years would be like. In their we created some quite rich pictures, which yes. we've got quite a few trees here. Quite a few trees. We did use the, the picture of a, a flower and the three parts of the flower, the roots, the stem and the flower as, as, yes, remind, remind as a model. That was a very effective metaphor. Yes, yeah, so we talked about, as we can talk about it as we're looking at these, we talked about the roots of the flower as being like the, the, the real structure that the flower has in it and its kind of roots into the earth as being the things in a, a, a group that gives it structure, so like the shared agreements, um, ways of welcoming new people into the group, how we make decisions, all those kinds of things. And then we talked about the stem as being the, the group process, so like the, the quality of the relationships and, and all those kinds of things in the group, how well people get on with each other and how well people work. And then we talked about the, the petals on the flower as being the the kind of the tasks that we do in the group and, and the actual results of, of what the group's trying to achieve. And if you want to put this on me, it's fine. The only other thing that I'd say about it is, well, two things i say about it. One is that research into um, what's going on with current transition initiatives has shown that a lot of them are struggling with group issues and how, how well they work in groups. And it's, it's showing it to be one of the obstacles. So that's one of the reasons that that was chosen as a theme for this conference, to try and give some support around those kinds of issues. And the approach that we were taking this morning was to think about transition has it, its own roots in, in permaculture, and permaculture tries to, to look at natural systems and then create models of, of natural systems in our, our social world to provide really sustainable ways of doing things. And so we were thinking about what are the features of natural systems that we could replicate in our groups to make our groups more, more resilient. So features such as, um, you know, fundamental viability in the first place. What is it that makes a, a group viable and makes it really fit into its surrounding community and context? And then resilience, adaptability, flexibility of the group, um, interconnectedness of the group and what's, what's around the group, and feedback loops that happen in natural systems, thinking about how we give and receive feedback to each other and we can, we can be a, a kind of learning system. And we thought about how could we replicate some of those features of, of natural systems in our groups and um, really make the groups kind of more highly highly resilient and adaptable to a, a rapidly changing and complex world. So that was the thinking behind um, this process that we took people through to, to support them with, with their process in transition groups kind of all over the country. And the feedback that we've got has been, has been very good. I've had people all day coming up to me saying how much they enjoyed the session and, and they, how much they got from it. One of the resources that's available for groups uh, support for transition groups in this area of, of uh, developing group skills and group structures and processes is a training course that has been designed specifically to address these issues and to support groups in putting, place, putting in place the right kinds of structures and the right kinds of processes that will really, really help them work well together. Uh, so it's called, the course is called um, Outrageously Successful Groups and it normally runs for two days 
and it covers seven key areas of group life. Uh, it covers um, developing a shared vision and purpose for the group, um, identifying the tasks and, and roles that come out of that shared vision, uh, thinking about um, communication models, how people communicate, whether they communicate in controlling or collaborative ways, uh, thinking about issues of power, uh, decision making um, and leadership, and um, how we sustain momentum in a group, how we welcome people into the group, how we keep people going, and how we deal with people leaving the group and getting the right kind of group agreements that we can use as a reference point for when times get difficult. And um, managing conflict, finding ways to manage and address conflict in creative and constructive ways, and how to run effective meetings. And how the course works is by addressing each of these seven key areas of group life, um, it works a little bit like a jigsaw puzzle where you can't only focus on one of those areas. You need to be working on attending to all seven of those areas. And then um, those are the things that contribute to making a, a, the group work as a healthy and functioning system. And it's, it's an approach where there isn't any kind of quick fixes, but by doing these things and putting the jigsaw puzzle together, it can be a really effective and, and satisfying experience. So that course is available. Uh, outrageously successful groups. Uh, you can find out about it through the Transition Network. It's on the Transition Network website under the, the training page.